<laughs> Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the channel. I've got my new friend Chester here, and Chester contacted me, one of my subscribers, right? Yes, definitely. And I always say, if you see me, you're going to be in town, please contact me, come over. Yeah. And he's over at my house, found my house, no problem, right? No, no trouble? No problem at all. And, uh, and here he is. So uh, where are you from? A little background. Where are you from? I'm from Tampa, Florida, wow. United States. Yeah. I've been there all my life. My family's there, still mm. there. I'm here now in the better paradise. Florida's expensive now, though, isn't it? Oh, it's crazy. In the last few years, uh, since the, after the COVID, it just that's the new California, I call. Mm. Because people are just flooding there, and everything is just starting to you know, popularized. Well, I think when uh, when COVID hit and the governor DeSantis made it really easy for people and didn't crack down like they did in other states, a lot of people said, well, yeah. I'm going to go to Florida where they just leave me alone. Yes, and, that's uh, the key. Yeah, and that worked, yeah. you know, so you got a lot of people going there, but you still have like real high property insurance, don't you? Well, yeah, Our but we don't have insurance. state tax. Okay. And what that, it all kind of balanced out, but uh, yeah, DeSantis didn't agree with the woke, especially mm -hmm. at Disney. And then the people that were not woke in California or New York mm -hmm. and all that, they said the heck with this because they were, you know, tied down in their own mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Well, we were all open. Everything was open. You could choose to do things. Mm -hmm. Now, at the beginning, it wasn't because of the safety yeah. factor. We had to get control of the mm -hmm. COVID. And then after that, it all got better. It got quicker in Florida than it did any other state. Yeah, my brother lives in Florida, West Palm Beach, and I got a friend of mine from Sweden. And he was wow. over there, and he said the whole time everything was open, and they didn't have any more deaths than anybody else. Everything was fine. I had a small business landscape there, and mm. uh, I there were, I didn't miss no days. But it was a job that you're outside, right. you're not inside buildings and things. Mm. But I loved it. It didn't slow me down at all. Mm. So mm. why did you think about leaving Florida? I mean, you're from Tampa. You lived there your whole life. Sounds like you had a good business. And mm -hmm. what was your reason for even considering coming uh, to the Philippines? YouTube, watching you. Oh, it's watching our fault. All the, <laughs> yes, y'all's fault because I started about five years ago. And uh, That's when I got here. it's mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, this is nice. And then I started looking into it. They have a VA office in Manila and I said, I'm a veteran. And I said, well, you know, that would be a good vacation. But I, at that time, like six, seven years ago, I was treated with prostate cancer. And oh. so, yeah, and then the VA definitely took care of me. So that slowed down, because I did some LDR back then. Mm. And I was looking forward to coming before retirement yeah. um, in 2023. For what military were you in? Air Force. Oh, for how long? Uh, just the four years. Yeah. I just went in to get my education, but I got hurt while I was in there, became service disabled. Mm. And then after that, it was all easy because mm -hmm. they took care of everything else well there's a lot of guys a lot of a lot of veterans here you know and mm -hmm. they've settled they seem to settle in really quickly i guess because they're training and stuff and they're just some of them been to other countries and they're just hit the ground running it seems like yeah well i talked to a lot of guys back when i was in the service in in 79 well eight in the 80s and they all talk about manila they talk mm -hmm. about the feelings you got to come mm -hmm. but at that time i had my objective just to go to college after mm -hmm. i did my four years would you study uh, engineering. Oh, wow. At USF in Tampa, Florida. What kind of engineering? Uh, electrical. Huh. Yeah. That's a hard one. I had my, my, uh, <laughs> my brother in law, um, my brother's wife's son, he, um, no, brother's wife, wife's daughter's boyfriend, or husband now. Yeah. Um, he went to electrical engineering and never made it to the very end. The, the last test is supposed to be just brutal. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't. I got to my third year, and I was doing about 18 semester hours, and uh, it was burning me out uh, by then in the third year. And I told my VA counselor. He said, "Well, take a break. If you're looking for a job, go to the U.S. Postal Service." Mm. And and for me, I did apply, and they just they grabbed me up, and then I stayed with the Postal Service for 16 years. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so you got I, a nice pension and everything from them? No, because I only stayed 16 years. Uh, I had enough of that. Okay. That, that, that that's a uh, that's a that's that's a, not a not a good job. But it paid well. Very were you delivering well. mail or what were you doing? No, I worked into the Tampa airport where I was a distribution clerk. Mm. Shout out to yeah. the U.S. Postal in the Tampa. Mm. And a um, uh, lot of night work all the time. I went through two marriages doing wow. that job. Uh, it's, I, you know, it's a good start, but I kind of extended it a little longer for 16 years, mm. and I wish I never did. Mm. I never, the one, two things I did in my life is that to start my business mm -hmm. and come to the Philippines. 
Mm. <laughs> so you started a landscaping business, huh? Which... Yeah, I started about 15 years ago in, in Florida, mm. and um, oh, it was it was great. Mm. Kept me healthy. Mm. Business always everywhere. Yeah, I bet. Know, uh, from lawn service to landscape to designs and things like that. Mm. So I kind of took my college experience, what I had back then, and mm -hmm. I kind of applied it, and it made it easy. It's mm. easy. If, but you have to love it because it's hard work in Florida. Yeah. The weather is... Yeah, the heat and everything. Yeah, it's rough. A lot of young guys, they see me. I was in my 50s. They're in their 20s, and they think they could outdo me, but they all fall aside within three days. Mm. Yeah, they can't take that heat, but I'm conditioned for it. Mm. How do you find the weather here in the Philippines? I find it oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, compared to Florida, uh, the humidity is a huge factor. There is no humidity here. Yeah. You know, I, I don't sweat. I don't feel it at all. I don't feel it. And the warmness and the tropical, uh, and that's amazing. All the landscape plants that I've worked with is here. Mm. It's amazing. I've been to different locations, like the Bougainvillea there. Mm. Uh, all right there. I, it, it, and I saw them in YouTube, some of your uh, YouTube videos I saw. Yeah. Yeah, I was attracted that way. I said, oh, I could go there and do some work here or something. People love their plants here. If you go to Valencia, the market, you live out uh, in Valencia. Oh, yeah. You yeah. go to the market, they're every selling plants, you know. And yeah. like, I never thought, why would I even buy a plant? Now I've got, I don't know what I've got, like maybe 20 plants upstairs. Well, like my wife keeps they, buying they, more. They, they, they take TLC, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the house I have, uh, the owner, that's all she has out there, a lot of plants. So I like jade plants. Uh -huh. And I've had, I've had like five of them die on me, and I take care of them. They're outside. <laughs> I give them water, and then they, they rot or something. I don't know what what I, I'm doing. I highly wrong. recommend any plant do research, Google it, and, yeah. and get everybody's opinion about it. And a lot of time, a lot of plants uh, thrives in certain environment in terms of uh, like I know the plants here thrives. They are thriving in Florida. Yeah. But you can't take a plant from a different state. And, well, okay. when I lived in California, those jade uh -huh. plants were on the side of the of highways. Wow. The yeah. bushes of them, you know, and they were yeah. indestructible. But now that, that could be a factor of the soil. That's yeah. the number one thing uh, for if it's in a pot, if you're going in that yeah. direction, is the soil. And I've gone and plant plants on new homes, and they just get wiped out because the soil is just not what it, you can see it to be. Yeah. You have to test it. Huh. But a lot of times it's cheaper just to buy another plant. And, yeah you know change that up but your soil is like air to us mm. uh, if you get that down for and it's the combination every plant is different mm. uh, when i bought milk they were healthy and i kept them the same dirt maybe a bigger pot but mm. yeah mm. they grow like children the root system uh they're real picky uh, uh this millions of plants so mm. that's why i said just do your research on it Fall see, see my it. wife being a filipino she's superstitious and she believes that uh -huh. jade plants are money plants so, be, so yeah. one died, she panicked. Oh no, our plant's dying. What's gonna? We're gonna go broke. <laughs> there is a money plant. There is. Yeah. Where can I, it's, I, it's booming in Taiwan. It's I want to buy a bunch of those money plants. Yeah, you can't bring it here though. That's oh, why I no. come here. It's it's the marijuana plant. The money plant. Oh, that's the money plant. Yeah. Yeah, in Florida, it's booming there. Is um, it legal in Florida now? Uh, uh, they no, uh, but it's there. Um, it's it's medical. Okay. Uh, if you want to call that legal. It's yeah. not recreational, but... It started that way in Thailand, too. It's medical first, and then it went legal. Oh, yeah. It, recreational. It is uh, it is medical, which is really easy, and um, it's booming uh, mm. there. But I don't... I uh, Myself, um, uh, I'm too old for that. I gotta, I'm got. Yeah. i watching out for my health, and yeah. anything I put in my mouth, or I, I'm just... You know, yeah, be I mean, I, I like everybody else back in the 70s, smoke some pot and stuff, yeah, but yeah. Um, here in the Philippines, uh, I heard there's a couple of senators that put a bill forward mm -hmm. to legalize yeah. it, recreational marijuana, or maybe it was maybe it was just medical, but I don't know whether it's going to go anywhere. I'm not sure how the new president feels about it or not, but it seems like Thailand is making a bunch of money off and get a lot oh. of tourism about it, So, but I'm not sure if the Philippines wants to do it or not, you know, and I'm not really cared. I don't care one way or the other, well, really. here they got to get past the divorce thing. Uh, it's a Catholic uh, country and ruled by Catholic rules. Mm -hmm. So once you get, w once that step gets past that, and let's say legal, I think they're working on that. Yeah, I've now. heard that too. Yeah. Then the the medical part is really for people with cancer. I had cancer, and mm -hmm. I, I, it helped. Mm -hmm. it, it does help mm -hmm. if you got uh, terminal illness because it helps you eat. There, there's a, yeah. it's a plant, no yeah. more different than your book and Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the uh, Indians back in the days in America, that was their thing yeah. to keep their self, uh, good. That's um, right. Uh, so I don't, I don't, uh, um, 
I don't know. Uh, I agree with it mm. if you need it yeah. and if you want it. Because mm. uh, I've never seen anybody in America like go out there and do uh, violent when no. they don't want to smoke no. a weed. Yeah, I haven't either. So um, you came to the Philippines. You said that when you stepped off the plane, <laughs> you knew that this is the place. Is it the first time being here? Yeah. Cause, wow. Uh, now, I won't say in Manila I didn't feel it there. I had to spend a night oh, in Manila because okay. all my flights got Yeah, away. I did too, yeah. And um, I, I, I felt okay there. I said, oh, okay. I stayed at the airport for longer than I should because my flight got delayed and I had nothing scheduled. Yeah. And then, you know, there'd be scammers coming up and say, hey, I could take you here, there, and there for 3,000 pesos. And I kind of just, yeah. I didn't, I walked away from that. But mm. I ended up getting a room nearby and then coming back and getting on a, my flight I, mm. I had booked. Uh, I didn't reserve a flight when I got Manila. I mm. decided to buy the flight once I got Yeah, there. they're cheap anyway. And uh, But when I got to Dumanguete and uh, the people, when I, you know, I could look at a person, look them in the eye and, and the vibe I got. I yeah. have to say it was the vibe. And the guy who picked me up on the scooter, you know, it, it was like all along the, the route, I just felt everybody smile. You know, I guess I because I was. I felt the same way. Yeah. It, it's like a feeling of. Uh, hey, but you can feel somebody you. like you meet someone like, whether am I a trike driver or bus driver or uh -huh. policeman or whatever. You can just take one look at them. No, okay, this guy's not a threat to me. He's not going to yeah. try and scam me or take advantage of me or whatever. And they just want to help you out and, you know, whatever. I'm sure they want to make profit on their. They're right if they're, they're well, renting you something, they're, but there's nothing wrong with that. They're living. Yeah. yeah. But I had no problem. I've been here for five years now and just yeah. love it more and more every day. Me, I've been so, here a short period and I just feel like I've been here uh, forever. But now, I tell you what, the uh, uh, we get into the traffic. I did get me a scooter at the uh, hotel. I told the security yeah. to go ahead and bring up one and yeah. I started driving right off day one. Now, have you ridden one before in America or a motorcycle? Yeah, well, now I came prepared. Now I did too. I did uh, got on my driver's license, Florida driver's license, motorcycle tour. So I went and took the course months before I came. Well, you're and, a smart guy. That's a good way to do well, it. I yeah. learned it from the uh, YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, preparation, preparation. Mm. And uh, um, uh, with that, did help a lot. And uh, uh, but I own seven motorcycles in my life, so yeah. I, I kind of was familiar. So getting on a scooter. The was scooters like, are easy, you know. Yeah. yeah. No and, shifting uh, gears or nothing. <laughs> I I tell you what, I can get into that, but the magic here is that there's no traffic lights. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it sounds insane, doesn't it? Uh, yes. You say, well, there's no traffic and no stop signs either. Yeah. And people say, oh, that's crazy. They'll be crashing left and right, but it works beautifully. Well, it's it's the controls. Yeah. I, I figured it out. It's like uh, you get to an intersection. You, do you look at them? They look at you. They let you yeah. know, or you let you know. Or and there's no rules like the person yeah. to the left, whoever gets here yeah. first. It's like you go when you can go. Yeah, it's like walking. Yeah. And then, and 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 I went to Cebu City, drove there, drove uh, truck up there, and um, the lights are long. I know. They, and I noticed everybody shuts their car off. Oh, they do. <laughs> yeah. I didn't notice they got, that. Yeah, I I started looking over. No, I had a diesel stick there. I didn't shut it off because it was my first time there. Yeah. And um, uh, but it is a minute and a half to two minutes long of light. Well, they they've got a, a lot of traffic light in Bacala, which isn't that yeah. far from here, about an hour or so away. I've been through there. Yeah. yeah and we the went highway. there, and yeah. we wanted to go to the mall. There's no traffic, nobody around at all. And we got to turn left. Light yeah. turns red, and we sit there. And we say, it's got a timer on there, too. It tells yeah, you how you long you're going to be there. And waiting, and you go, this is so ridiculous. Yeah. You know, to have a computer no, nobody from the telling other me. Yeah, that nobody's yeah. around. I could just yeah. go. It's all about control. Yeah. Uh, to, it seemed like the, in America with the traffic light system, which is, yeah. I, you think, well, they need it. Well, you know, I'm not going to give my opinion on that. But you really get programmed. Watch the light. Don't watch everybody else. Yeah. And if you're occupied, you'll run right through like that's how a lot of people get hurt. Yep. Well, here, you're, every intersection you go to, you're going to look. you got to pay attention to everything. you pay attention, yeah. yeah. And um, even though I don't speak the same language, but we still communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, um, I found driving here. I drive a car now, but uh, when I had a motorcycle, no problems at all. You know, I've had a couple accidents and stuff, but I can't really blame the people on that or anybody else. It's just things hey, that happen, too, you know. I've had... I had four. Four. Wow. Yeah. Um, now small. Yeah, little... Not not with someone. Yeah. Except I did go to a town, a vice city, and the guy side swapped me and took my light out. Oh no. Now I took it to the Han. They took care of that. Mm. Shh, don't tell Max. <laughs> mm. And so you got a Honda ADV. 
Yeah, uh, 165 yeah. is a 2024. Uh, Max Place hooked me up on that because I told him I looked it up. Mm -hmm. I said, well, it's an on-road, off-road, and where I live, I have to get off the road, concrete road, and get on some dirt trail. Yeah, there are some yeah, a lot like that, yeah. Yeah. Let's um, give him a shout out. What's the name of his business? Where you uh, rent Max today? Max Place in Dowin, number one. Max Place in Dowin. If you want to rent, rent a motorcycle, guys, go see him. Yeah, he's on Google. He's on, uh, you can Google. I even put up a review, a five star review for him. And the thing about the guy, if you got a problem, like I didn't know what that A button is on there. Yeah. That's for like when you stop, it automatically shuts off. And uh, he said, anytime you have a problem, watch that. I watched him in the middle of the night in Valenci, and he just explained it to me. Mm. Uh, him and his partner, Dennis. I had a flat at home. Or that was a, another, mm. a, a, uh, the PCX, and uh, his partner come all the way to Valencia to repair it. Wow. Yeah, no charge. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I think Goldfinger's rents from he told me about Goldfinger. I know him. Yeah. yeah Goldfinger's he he keeps bikes from Max. He's the one that gives what free helmets to everybody too. Yes. Helps a lot of local free his helmets. Heart. Yeah. Bless his heart because I, I notice when I'm riding around the kids are in the middle. Yeah. And there is probably a few of them do have the pink helmet, different mm. helmets, but that that is critical. So you're gonna buy one or just keep renting? Oh yeah, uh, well I know now I'm gonna go towards the uh the owner of the house I rent, uh, that's how I drive around the truck because I use their truck. Mm -hmm. They let me use it if I want to because mm -hmm. I do have a Filipino license yeah. now. And uh, that's another good story there. It took me 90 minutes to get my license here. Well, that's quick. That's amazing. LTO in Dumaguete. Uh, and um, they have a 125 Yamaha and I've been riding it around. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think I feel a little better on a motorcycle. Than oh, a really? Yeah, it sits up a little higher. And um, the scooter, uh, the comfort level is not there. The shock system on a motorcycle is a much... That's because the wheels are small, too. Yeah, yeah. that, too, and plus, um, uh, it's just something different. The motorcycles are designed for long-term. Scooters yeah. are meant for running. The only there. problem I had with the motorcycle, which I've got, you know, 400cc, is the, um, the clutch. When you're yeah. stuck in traffic in Dumaguete and you're holding that clutch in and out, in and out, shifting gears, and my arm just goes literally numb like a shot full yes. of Novocaine. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing when I ride my wife's scooter. It's so much easier, you know, for short trips yeah. and stuff. So well, that's why I picked the scooter because I knew they were automatic. I knew all the, in uh, that click 125. I had to get rid of that because at night I go out. I can't see the. You have to yeah. put that locking thing in there to lock it, oh. and then you stick the key in there. Well, I would. I, I couldn't even see it. even with my glass. I couldn't even see it at night. Mm. Where this one is automatic. Yeah. You got a fob in your pocket. You just turn it and it pops on. Mm. Um, uh, but now I'm not unhappy. I'm, I'm still probably will keep a scooter mm. because, like you said, my hands even you yeah. know on a good 30, 40 minute drive it starts to get. Numb. But you know the beauty of the whole thing is you can rent one, test mm -hmm. it out before you go put all your money down and buy yeah. it, and register and all that crap, and then you decide this isn't what you want. That's what I'm then doing. Stuck I'm with doing it, it with rental cars. I'm doing it with uh, uh, mopeds and motorcycles. I. I with a motorcycle investment or a car, I highly recommend go out and just keep it for two yeah. or three days a week. You think you might get a car too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting older. I gotta have a car. I gotta, See, I, I gotta show you my car. Yeah, I haven't experienced the rainy season yet, mm. and I live up in the mountains, and I gotta go through it. It rains trail. a lot more there than it does down. Yeah. Cause I lived up there. It's a whole different climate up there. Yeah, whole different. It'll be raining up there and sunny down here. I, I've been getting a little bit of that uh, experience, and it's a little slippery on the. Yeah, boat. when we lived at Big Rock, uh -huh. sometimes we come in from town at night, you know, and uh, it had rained, and that road back oh. to those apartments was like sloppy mud, yeah. two or three inches deep, and it was mm -hmm. dangerous. We fell down a couple oh, times. Down on a moped. That's see, that's another thing. If I look for a motorcycle, I'm gonna definitely do a dirt bike style street legal yeah. dirt bike. Uh, because uh, you never know, you know, you get whenever you it rains with a dirt bike, you can go right through it. And then mm. scooters, eh, I wouldn't try. Have you it. seen the Honda XRMs? Oh yeah, those yeah. are good bikes. Yeah, because they're shifting the, gears, now, but there's no clutch. Yeah, so they um, have the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, the, yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen one here yet. Um, we got one to show you over here. Oh wow! Uh, my so friend it's, just so my it's friend automatic just, clutch. Yeah, my friend just oh. bought one. Well, that might, I'm not looking yeah. into that. They're but bulletproof, too. But the clutch too. thing is a pain. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, uh, that, that would help because, you know, we are a little older. Yeah. It's, nice yeah. to have, it's nice to have air cons and automatic. It is, yeah, it that. is, yeah. Hmm. So, um, when do you think you'll um, 
go back to America? You think you plan to go back soon? You got a house back there or anything or any belongings? No, I'm or? prepared. I'm prepared when I come here, either here or Thailand or other parts of the world, mm. uh, stay out of, yeah. you know, just, uh, I prepared all my stuff in order. Um, I do plan to go by the end of the year because I got my SRRB. Yeah. I got all the things I came to accomplish. Yeah. So it makes it extremely easy to leave the country and come back. And I need to go back to see the family, my brothers mm. and sisters. They, uh, they're they're a lot older than I am, mm. and um, and I got my stuff in storage. And that's another thing. I need to get some stuff here. I, I got into the solar thing, and I got lithium batteries, but I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna, you know, do that. Because uh, I've been looking here at all the solar systems. Because up there in the mountains, the power do go out. Well, you need to talk to Greg and Wilma. Okay. You know, they've got their YouTube channel. Have you ever seen it? I'm, I'm Greg and Wilma building in the Philippines. Because uh, he's put in a whole solar system. Uh -huh. And they have no power bill anymore. Yeah. They run it all yeah, year, all day all long. Every, you know, whether power's on or off, you know. And they're yeah, just saving great. a bunch of money. Yeah. Um, up there, you know, I looked at the... Uh, I've only been there for going on I believe four months I did get a Starlink because there's no internet up there. yeah I, I called up all the companies and say oh no we only got 20 spots in your area and it's booked up so I ordered Starlink well actually I went to see boot yeah whenever I did my SRB paperwork yeah. got it completed uh, there are ceremonies coming up on uh, April 11th or 10th mm -hmm. uh, I hope that comes out good got a boat going by in the ocean wow. here guys we'll show you the boat Guys go by about this time of day. They'll stay out all night long fishing. Wow. So you would put solar on a rental house? Uh, well, there. What I'm doing, I'm doing figuring out when the power goes off. I haven't been through the rainy season. Right now, with no aircon, yeah. all I'm concerned about is Star Lake running, a fan running. Yeah. And you only need. You can do it with a thousand kilowatts, thousand watts. They got those battery packs, you know. A lot yeah, of people the, use the those. I've, I've looked here in Dumaguete. They got the Blue Eddy. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy here who has one. Um, uh, then there's different levels of. But I'm looking at about a thousand, two thousand. See, I'm, I'm, I may go with a little portable inverter, gas yeah. one, because, uh, you know, you just crank it up and it's good. Yeah. You know. Uh, where the battery one, you gotta have solar to charge it, or you don't plug it in, juice it, and use electric and things I like that. Think a Honda generator, the small ones, that yeah. do everything you need. There's one here I looked at as similar to it. it, it it's around the price range of a power station yeah. with lithium in it and all that, like mm -hmm. a Blue yeah. Eddy. And so I'm debating back and forth on that one mm -hmm. because the power stations are they're quiet. Yeah. And uh, you yeah. know, if you need juice, it's longer to throw the panels out there. But you gotta understand when you use solar panels. During a rainy season, you have no sunlight. Yeah, it's cloudy. Well, we don't get that here. It may be up in Valencia. Yeah. I mean, it's a little more cloudy, but down here, it's, even during rainy season, the clouds come in, the rain comes, rains for an hour and a half, goes away, and it's back back like this. Well, that's because you have a million dollar view. Yeah, that water pushes the current, yeah. pushes it yeah. away from you. Pushes quicker, it away. Yeah, pushes into the mountain where I'm at, yeah. and I'm stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, I enjoy. It. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I love that tropical feeling up there. Well, I loved that up there too. It was just so cool, and you know, whole different. Especially at night, you leave uh, Dumaguete. You know, if you're out, you know, uh, for friends having a drink or something, and yeah. head back up to Valencia around you know 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and there's a, like a, a wall you hit, yeah. and you can feel that cool air when oh. you break through. Yeah. And by the time you go past forest camping on your way up, you know, it's a it's whole chilly. different climate. <laughs> yeah, it's chilly. Literally chilly. <clears throat> yeah. So, what did your uh, your family think when you said, "Hey, guess what, guys? I'm moving to the Philippines." Well. <clears throat> That they knew they they know now I've had probably about three or four LDR mm -hmm. um, over the years and um, but you never met them in person no that that's an odd thing um, I don't really recommend LDRs unless you come within a six month period. I agree 100 uh, percent it it never I think you know once I got here it's not uh, fair to the girls too cause they get their yes. hopes up you know and then you never show up yeah and, well I supported them because yeah. you know it's not much but uh, the problem is time. If you go over six months, uh, it it affects it affects them here and yeah. there. Uh, now they will hold on. Like the laundromat lady, she says she's she still thinks about the foreigner 
but he never came. It's been three years, and uh, it's like yeah. an LDR. But yeah. she's moved on. But every yeah. time I go there to drop my clothes off, we have a conversation. She talks about it. Yeah. It's like you know, it's been three years. Move on. But uh, they really attach uh, like that, and um, they do. They attach very quickly. Yes. You know, like you know, you <laughs> you date them a couple times, and you're you're their boyfriend. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm learning that. So you have to you have to be. Um, careful you know their feelings because oh, these yeah. girls have feelings you know and you and you know you respect them let them know what you're looking for you know and if things aren't working out and you know that like it's best to end as soon as possible then to string them along and let them think that mm-hmm. you know it's going to go somewhere when you know when you know in your heart it's not yeah, and it can go the other way too yeah like it can. In my first relationship here it went it went crazy mm-hmm. uh you know it, it because the uh the attention yeah. that a young woman here gives someone in their 60s mm. is nothing what you can get in America unless you're Brad Pitt. Yeah. You know, here you're the Brad Pitt. Yeah. And it's it's a, it's a life-changing experience. The thing is, it doesn't change. Yeah, like, I'm married. We've been together for three, three years, and the affection level has gone up since we got married. And it's just like, you know, I've never dated anybody or been in a relationship where I felt so loved. Oh. I mean, you really, you know you're loved. Well, the and, woman here and, knows it. And, yeah, yeah, but they, <laughs> that's true. But, I mean, the thing is, some say, well, you know, they're just doing that because of the money or the security or whatever. But, mm. okay, if that's true, then they should get an Academy Award for acting because it's yeah. the best, you know. It's the action they serve, they give. Yeah. Well, they're, they're grateful for what you're giving them. I mean, that's one thing. You give them a whole new life, and they're grateful for that. And they give your, you a new life. They give you a new Especially life, too. Especially if they're... 30, 40 years yeah. younger because that you know at, at our age we feel younger when we're around someone young in a relationship that's that true. is younger than us. That's uh, true. Make me feel like I'm a teenager. Not that, but you know, young adult. Well I know a lot of guys here that you know they're in relationships married or you know long term relationships that aren't gonna end in um, big age difference and now they're in their eighties and this young woman is looking after them and cares about them and so they're going to die eventually, but they're going to die having somebody that loves them, looking after them, make sure they're taking their medication, taking them to see their friends, taking yeah. care of the house and all this stuff. A way better ending to their life yeah. than if they were in America and they end up in some nursing home that's going to max out all their savings and, and somebody that's making the minimum wage is going to decide what you're going to eat, what you're going to watch on TV, yeah. when you're going to bed, everything about you. And the and, abuse that occurs yeah, there. And they're going to decide everything, whereas like here... You keep your dignity yeah. until the end, and yes. that's important. For a man. For a man, that's really important. Yeah. And you can it, keep your dignity here to the very end um, with a woman that, you, that loves you, you know, or, care, or you can have a caregiver, too. Some guys just have a person that they pay yeah. to be their caregiver. It's not a sexual relationship. It's no. just a, like a live-in, take care. Yeah, friendship, one, whatever. And, and, and a relationship that we know what is yeah. expected. And um, I do know the the women here, uh, yeah, most of them I've seen that when they connect with a foreigner, uh, it's like magic, you know. They yeah. they, uh, they they know their place, yeah. the yeah. traditional way. Well, yeah, it's very much a very traditional way. It's like uh, I guess assuming the way things might have been, say in the 1950s or 60s. Oh yeah. In a relationship, like <laughs> with my wife, and it's like I and I, when my wife and I, when we first moved in together. This is our third place we lived together. Mm-hmm. We never said okay. You do the laundry and I'll do this and you do that and I'll do it. We know it just happened. It's like she does the dishes, you know. I do them sometimes myself, you know. But um, the laundry she was doing, now we send it out because it's so cheap here. I do that too. You know, and yeah. uh, it's just so cheap to send out. There's no yeah. point doing it. It gives we, them we, a job. We and have a washer. I enjoy getting out of the house yeah. and talking to them. Yeah, but um, <laughs> she just does her things. I do mine. I make the money. And when it comes to decisions, I kind of have the final say on most yeah. things. But. She changes and my they mind. Expect it. Yeah, and she changes her mind. She says, "Well, I would rather do this." We talk about it. Okay, all right, we'll go your yeah. way then. That's but amazing. There's no like, problems. I, there's no fighting about yeah. anything. I look for maids, and and I say, "Well, how much you charge?" Oh, you tell me. Yeah. And it's like, wow, you know. That's uh, common here. Yeah. So you don't you don't you don't uh, look for the price. You basically look for the person that is locally. But it same. It, it was amazing how it reversed. Yeah. Where that uh, you tell them the price. Yeah. Well, they do that with foreigners, and like, uh, mm-hmm. we got a maid too, and uh, we recommended by a friend here, and um, just with Jen being pregnant and stuff, couldn't clean the house, and yeah. so, so how much it was going to be? It was normally they're getting like 300 pesos a day, which is yeah. like six bucks, yeah. and we said no, we're going to pay five. 
Good. And she's really happy, you know, and like first time she did the house, I was stunned. Like she's taking oh. the screens out and yeah. cleaning the screen. She's cleaning the ceiling. Yeah. I mean, every square inch <laughs> of our house behind the stove. I mean, everywhere. I mean, it was like a, I couldn't believe. So I thought our house was clean. I really do. We keep our house clean. But when she was done, it was like unbelievable. It and was I dedication. Said, yeah. That and then she worked crazy. like six, seven hours. And I said, well, you know. She's doing too much for 500, so we gave her six. Oh. And now she comes once a week, and she's happy, we're happy, and I've recommended her to some friends, but, um, yeah, you know, it's like, it works out, you know. She's got, she's a single mom, so it's good yeah. for her, and, you know, but, yeah. Oh, I, I uh, the maid I have now, it's been uh, exceptional. Um, it, it is, they, they, uh, they definitely do their part, mm. you know, helping out. Just think if you were living in Florida, you want to get a maid. What's Oof. that going to cost you? Forget that, no. Yeah. Not with my, not my social security. No, that mm. don't happen. Mm. What know? is um, in Tampa area? Because I've been through there. I've never actually spent any time in Tampa. But um, what is like? Say you want to get a, a decent one bedroom apartment. What would it cost? Oh, in Tampa? now uh, twenty three. When I was there, uh, studio will run you minimum. I say on the side of town that you may not be real happy with is about a thousand a month. A studio. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you got one bedroom with the kitchen and all that in there. You're looking at 12 plus. Well. Yeah. Uh, that's on the low end now. I said the location. Yeah. Now you start getting near uh, Ballast Point area, the South Tampa area. You're looking at minimum 2,000 to 5,000. To 5,000? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here. That's easy. Here in Negros, you can get, I know people that have, basically it's a mansion on the beach. Mm -hmm. Private property, maybe three or four acres walled in, swimming pool wow. on the beach, granite countertops, five bedrooms, and they're paying a thousand a month. Yeah. And that's uh, outrageous for here. A thousand a month is outrageous. Yeah. What'd you say you're paying for your rent? I'm paying fifteen K. Well that's not that's thousand. Like, that's like three hundred dollars. No, it's two hundred and sixty bucks. It's a four bedroom, wow. full kitchen, indoor, outdoor, and two, all furnished? Yeah, and a huge fish aquarium outside. Wow. With about 20 quarries in it. That's good feng, feng shui. Yeah, and they when I moved in, <clears throat> all furnished. All furnished. Uh, when I moved, and it was their home. Uh, they raised, they got, uh, I, I think, four or five kids, and they mm -hmm. raised their, they didn't actually, the house is new, practically about four or five years old. And um, the TV was like a 32, and they went out and put a 55 in there, brand new. Wow. Yeah. Uh, she just recently went in there, re-graveled everything. Um, they were there today, actually, they're there doing some more work. Uh, I have to show you the photos on it. Uh, for a landlord, oof, I'm not going nowhere. Same here. I'm yeah, so lucky I'm with my landlord. Uh, I'm so lucky. They, 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 you know, it's my only one now. I stayed at the hotel, and I got the house. And um, How'd you find it? Uh, uh, through my first ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, she lived in the area there, and I needed a house. And um, I went to, what's that place, Big Rock? Yeah, Big Rock, yeah. Big Rock. They went to Bell, but I went up the mountain and found a few other places. Mm -hmm. And um, and then she said, well, her relative and had the house there. And I went there, and that was it. I wow. grabbed it. Well, good oh, for yeah. you. Yeah, for that price. Uh, it has an inconvenience getting, I can't drive a car up there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the trail to the house in the mountains have no... Uh, yeah, you see that a lot. My, my wife's family's yeah. house is like that. It's literally a trail to the house. Yeah, but it's a brick home. It's a beautiful home. Huge. Mm -hmm. uh, not like this now. Yeah. This is a castle compared. But um, uh, just got lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's the thing, too, in the Philippines, at least here in Negros, is that um, mm -hmm. it's so easy to find a, a furnished apartment. Yeah. Because, you know, you come here, you just got rid of all your stuff back home. You don't want to be buying beds and dressers mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And yeah. it's really easy to find furnished, you know, and that's the way to go, I think, you know what I mean? But when you say furnished, you're talking about a kitchen with everything in it. Yeah. You Dishes, know, plates. plates. This is, it's like the family moved out yeah. and said, hey, it's That's yours. what I had. All my places had pots, pans, everything. Yeah. Everything you need. Um, this one had leather. It's got leather sofas. Like I said, it's got a huge TV in wow. there. And uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have... To, I brought a backpack when I came here, mm. my clothes, and that was it. Wow. Now, I did buy me a brew coffee and a coffee grinder I bought yesterday, mm. machine, because I'm just in the coffee, you know. Yeah, me too. Uh, um, uh, that's another thing. You like the coffee here? <laughs> I've had some good coffees, you know. But yeah, the beans you get. Uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, there's a guy, I actually interviewed him before he has, he has a coffee shop now 
I don't remember where it is. I'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to find it. But he's like a real connoisseur of coffee, where oh. he roasts his own beans the day he grinds them and those stuff. And it's supposed yeah. to be amazing coffee. He might be in Valencia. I don't know where he is. We need to find him. We need to those. find him. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I like good coffee, you know, I really do. Once you've been to Europe, like, you know, when, uh -huh. I used to just drink blank percolated coffee when I was growing up. Yeah. First time I went to Italy, you know, in France, and you try a coffee French over there. Press. Yeah, and you go, wow, this is a whole different thing, yeah. you know. I learned with the, that's why I recently bought a coffee grinder where you can do the different size of the grounds. It gives you different flavor and taste with the same bean. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and also temperature of the water gives you different temperatures. See, I had one of those come with my box of stuff, but it's from America, so I think if I plug it in, it'll blow up. <laughs> it's the uh, same plug. Well, you know, it's weird. Some of the things I've been noticing here, go the 220 here. Yeah, it's 220. Actually, uh, the plants and everything goes from 110 to 220. This is just a little old coffee grinder. It might oh. just blow. Well, now, I know the one I got, is, well, everything here is 220, but they had to do an adapter on it. It has a three-prong. Okay. And, uh, but um, that's the thing. You, you could... Uh, you don't see grounds here. You ever notice that? You never see a ground on a plug here. Like in America, um, two twenty. You got two one tens. That's all it is. Because mm. uh, in America, you have ground safety big time. Yeah. Uh, but you know how the electrical wire is running here. Yeah. It's, all, <laughs> it's like a spider web. I'm just amazed. Uh, and that, that's, that's crazy because I've gotten into that right there. And uh, but um, with two one tens, it's being returned. Okay. Uh, one pulls and one takes. Where that when you have a 110, you have a neutral that gives the return. So your current is kind of double. I didn't know any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you don't need ground. Now, it doesn't hurt to have a safety ground, but I think uh, copper is expensive. You know, the cost yeah. here. So they know it always worked with two 110s. Hmm. And I spoke to a lady, and uh, I had looked at her house, uh, and... Um, she had built it. It was amazing. I, I was like shocked. She's a Filipino. She she does my uh, my nails, mm. my pedicure, manicure. Yeah. She comes to the house, you know, like for a hundred pesos, uh, about three hundred pesos, and um, she introduced me to her house. She built herself. She's like mm. forty years old, and um, she said uh, she had some holes in the roof. She said, "I said you don't get rat traps up there." No, I use the two twenty. And she's gonna show me one day how she did that. But mm. she said, no, don't do that. Don't do traps. Do the electrical wire on them. And it mm. works good anyway. Well, <laughs> got there are some, there's there. some really nice homes here. Like oh, just yeah. recently I interviewed a guy who's got a $4 million house mm -hmm. in Darwin. It's amazing the stuff that, you know, the way he built that place. No, yeah, see nothing and, like it here. And it's booming here. And up where you live too, up, up the mountain, there's oh, some yeah. nice houses. They're, all built, up. they're building up there. Have you seen the one that's, uh, it's got like a Egyptian theme to it. Like he's got the eye of Sar of I have Osiris on this gate. I may have. It's on the left-hand side as you're heading up towards Castle Royal Falls. Okay. Big, fancy house. He built it all himself, apparently. Yeah. I w oh, oh, the gate is a steep hill going yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I walked all the way up there. Uh, took me a couple of weeks to, to uh, get my body conditioned for Have you gone down to Castro Falls yet? No. Um, uh, I'm, I'm planning that. I saw... Uh, Philippa P video, she just did a video up there. Hmm. And um, I saw, it's got steps. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, well, that's nice. Like 300 of them. Yeah, well, hmm. you know, that's good. That's the exercise road. Hmm. Uh, it takes me 45 minutes to get up there from the house, and um, it's a steep, it's a good I've walk. I've done it. Yeah, I used to do it all the time. Yeah, um, it's how, that's, that's, yeah. and um, so, I've walked from Big Rock all the way to Castro wow. Rural. Also, yeah. I've walked from Big Rock all the way to the Japanese Shrine. Now, I haven't tried that yet. I yeah. know you got to go right at yeah, the Yeah, you, right go, you go to the Y there. You go right, there's a stream. Then you yeah. follow that up. It's, it's a ways up there, Japanese Yeah, I, I took the scooter all the way, but it deads in. Yeah. And then that's the part I get a little confused on. The dirt trail, you, can't you can park it. your scooter at the stream at the bridge down there and then just oh. walk up, you know. But, walk but apparently they paved the road now, so you can ride up there. Oh, yeah, it's concrete slab. Yeah, it wasn't like, like that two before. two-lane, three-lane road up Yeah, there. it was just dirt before when I moved here. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a... The thing about Dumaguete, you know, it ain't no sleepy town. Now, the town area, the city area is really busy congested because of the business. Well, down by North Point, it's booming down there. Yeah. Just constantly building new oh. places. The, this highway is all brand new. Yeah. Redone, the whole thing. It's really nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, I love the highways. Uh, like any city anywhere in the world, it's going to be congested. But after mm -hmm. you get around, separated from it, oh, it's great. I was uh, watching something on YouTube today. They were saying that... Um, at one time, like in the 1960s, the Philippines was like one of the richest countries in Asia, huh. right up there with Japan. 
and then different things happen, you know, where they drop down, but they're coming back strong. And they're saying this country's got precious metals, they've got yep. oil, they've got gas, they've got a young population mm -hmm. that speaks English, they've got all these benefits going for them, plus beautiful islands everywhere, 7,000 of them. And this place, you know, it's going to be, I think someday, it's going to be more successful than Vietnam, than Malaysia, than Thailand, even maybe even than, than China or Japan. Well, what are there, like 700 islands here? Yeah, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000. plenty of room. Yeah. Plenty of room. Yeah. You might as well, I, I don't, you know, even though they're separated by water, uh, but uh, that that's a, that's bigger than the Bahamas. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the potential here is just unbelievable, I think. Well, anyway, um, thank you so much for sharing your time and everything. I Glad hope to get to, know, get to know you and see more more of you as times go by. It's so great yeah. to meet somebody that just hit yeah. the ground running and you got a yeah. big smile on your face and you're happy and this yeah. is it for you, huh? Oh, yeah. I, 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 that, like I said, that was the number two thing in my life. I'm not definitely not regretting is that starting my retirement here in the Philippines. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, no. I'm not changing that right now. Yeah. I have no desire to travel out. But, you know, over time, once I get, you know, uh, I'm, every day is a new day here. For yeah, me. it is, it's, yeah. It's like... Uh, uh, Don't you I, wake up in the morning just feeling, like, excited about the start of the day? That it's like... Yeah, retirement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like... It's like uh, sometimes I just sit there and drink my coffee and just look at the fish and just listen, you know, to the birds and things like that. Like, yeah, I know you just listen yeah. to the ocean yeah. and just and just relax. You can't you know? believe you're here, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's to me, that's that's a full retirement and have no stress yep. at all. None. None. Because the, the, the income you have is more than enough. Here. Oh, yeah, more than, than enough. Minimum, yeah, you know? more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's it's a it's a life changing. You it, uh, in comparing to watching videos over the years and putting my foot here, and actually uh, within the first week, I, I'm, it's not the same. You mm. have to come. Yeah. You have to be prepared. Yeah. And um, and I can guarantee you, you're you're not going to regret it. Mm. Yeah, I agree too. I agree 100. Well, percent Bye, buddy. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for uh, being here, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.